there you have it we have part two of the studebaker with the giant engine in it since the last video we have a functioning full braking system on it and we're using a um, uh, a larger truck hydro boost setup um, uh, type 2 uh, power steering pump or we're borrowing for our powered rack and powering our hydro boost this is our reservoir for the hydro boost and the hydro boost is under the dash and it is a speedway 90 degree hydro boost so we're not uglifying the motor up by having all that stuff out here now since the last time we have Push the radiator forwards to cure a cooling problem that we had, allowed us to put a bigger fan on the back and dropped it a little bit. The front clip still fits on the car, but for right now we're still just driving it with the headlights. So we have flexing headlights and turn signals and brake lights and all that. We, uh, the coils were taking up a lot of room in the, in the center of the engine. This is Thunder V12 setup. So what I did was I moved the coils back to the, this is the inner firewall, not the finished firewall, but we moved the coils back here. I just bought a hundred foot roll of spark plug wire and then ran some long leads. So now we have uh, uh, uncluttered the engine up in the center. We got rid of the giant throttle linkage and all the rest of the stuff that was on there. Uh, we also couldn't stand driving it with the straight pipes anymore. So this is, this is some pieces of stainless I had laying around the garage and I just made a log up and angled cut off the uh, straight pipes and pushed the log up there and ran it down to a little wide cap it on the end and have a little three inch muffler so we can stand uh, to hear it drive now. The uh, suspension uh, actually worked out great. We're halfway between our snubbers on our progressive front coils so it actually has a pretty nice ride to it. And the suspension is functioning. How about that? It's good for a, for a guess on a 2,600-pound uh, motor in a Corvette chassis. Um, we had, uh, since the first video, when the, when the car first moved, we had an issue with the... Uh, transmission uh, it seemed like the torque converter wasn't really hooking up and then it would suddenly engage uh, at about 1500 1800 rpm which was too much uh, too much torque for the uh, drive axles that we had so we turned out shearing These are the Corvette stubs. This is what it did to the first set of stubs that we had in or the first time we put it in first gear and just stepped on the gas. And you know, you would think that it would simply spin the tires, but it, it got traction and it uh, sheared both of those off. So we had to have some 4140s made up, which uh, should cure the problem. And what we thought was a torque converter issue actually was a misalignment. Our adapter plate we had on the back of the engine uh, had the dowel pins were not uh, perfectly lined up. And one dowel pin was off four or five thousandths and the other was almost 18. So half of that's nine. So what we were doing is we were shoving sideways on the main shaft of the, or the uh, torque converter snout on the transmission. And it, uh, and it knocked the pump out of the transmission twice. Um, Thunder V12 provided us with this really nice alignment gauge. This goes around the center adapter plate. It actually goes like this. It goes around the center adapter, uh, crankshaft adapter, which is here, off the back of the crankshaft. Then these two pins are dowel pins. We got some uh, offset dowel pins, lengthened them, put them in there, put the nice alignment gauge up there, lined up the dowel pins, welded them from the backside, and end of our transmission problem. But in the interim, we smoked the first transmission by running a lot of metal through it. Uh, Jake's transmission in Sanger, Texas was really helped us out by turning the transmission around quickly on a rebuild, and then they built one of their torque converters for us. And, uh, and that, system, that system worked out very nicely. So now we have a torque converter. We increased the stall a little bit, so now we have a torque converter that is all in at about 
1100 RPM instead of uh, 800, I think is what we had before. So the car made its maiden voyage down the road. It went to a uh, neighbor's barbecue party here a couple of weeks ago for the um, uh, for Memorial Day and uh, didn't drop any parts all the way there and all the way back, pretty cool. We don't have the secondary transmission, which is the gear vendors. We don't have that hooked up right now. So we're simply running on the primary transmission and we ran uh, about uh, uh, 75 miles an hour at about 1100 RPM. Uh, so that means once we put the gear vendors in, we ought to drop another uh, two or 300 RPM, I would guess, uh, at that same speed. We have a 18 gallon fuel cell in the tank now with a fuel gauge hooked up, which obviously is not gonna be enough gas to go anywhere, but it'll allow us to calculate our gas mileage. So that's the most important thing. Uh, trunk semi finished out, battery in the back. I've ran, ran additional grounding to the front of the car. So all the gauges and everything will read correctly with a good uh, battery ground instead of a chassis ground. So you can actually put a couple, three full-size tires in here, which is pretty cool for having a hot rod. You can actually haul stuff in. Now this is all, this is all uh, sanded down and rust bulleted out. Obviously, I've still got to do a lot of sheet metal work. I still have to put some sort of a splash pan on the back, but for right now, it's all about being able to go down the road and come back. The interior of the car now has the finished the finished height on the transmission tunnel. This is all a finished height now, the top of the transmission tunnel, all um, all removes for access to the U-joints and to shift the linkage to get the top of the transmission. I'm running a low car shifter in there. Um, this is the this is the primary transmission controller, the secondary transmission controller will be right behind it. I put marine gauges in here. Uh, so that they would be waterproof, beer-proof, coffee-proof gauges in here. And uh, I found these set of seats on Craigslist and just put them in, cheap seats to put them in to be able to drive it around. I've got some better seats to put in later. Um, I left the old gauges in here just for the old car look, and I'll probably have some sort of a roll-up that covers up the gauges on this dash so that it'll still have the nice old car look at the show. Uh, this is the pickup for our electronic uh, speedometer. So the speedometer is kind of cool because it is a marine product. So it gives you your latitude and longitude and it kind of tell you which direction you need to be going, um, which is kind of cool, I thought. And uh, that's what we're gonna run with. Uh, the pedals are all set up and, and working. It has uh, uh, very, uh, very sensitive brakes. The, the uh, power, um, the uh, hydro boost brakes, uh, once the once the car had about 10 miles on it, they really broke in. I mean, they worked nice. Um, I don't know what the gas mileage is yet. I've still had a little problems with the carburetors. Um, we're supplying them high pressure fuel. Uh, well, with the fairly high pressure fuel, regulating it at the, at the motor. And we're still getting a little tiny bit of uh, a flooding on the carburetors. I may have to get rid of the Hollies and go to Elderbrox or something. Uh, that's a little more uh, uh, friendly on fuel levels. Um, there has been no uh, motor mount interference, uh, uh, linkage interference. There's no problems with the with the functionality of the car whatsoever. Uh, my biggest uh, headache that I've had was simply trying to program that controller for the 4L80. I've never done that one before. And uh, it shifts the engine. The internals of the engine are so heavy. When it changes gears, it just feels like somebody hit you in the rear end. So. I've had to soften those shift points up uh, to where it actually drives pretty nice now. Um, we're maintaining uh, about a 180 or 190 degree operating temperature. Uh, I can do a little better job on the fan shroud and get it a little more angled back so we get some more airflow through the radiator, but we're getting a couple hundred degrees in the top of the radiator and about 140 at the bottom. So this is a, a track hole. We found a nice six core uh, we found a nice six core track hoe brass radiator uh, to get a condensed radiator that would have enough cooling capacity and it's working really well. Um, 
That's about it. Should we take it for a drive? Uh, we should probably jump in it and go somewhere. What do you think? I think I will start another video for that one. Come back for the next video.